Hello, and welcome to Cursed Content Club. I am your host, Mr. Feel, and with me as always oh. are my co-hosts, Dan and Bob Video Games of Gigaboots.com. I'm incredibly ecstatic to be here. How about you, Bob? Far less so. <laughs> and KZ Excellent of KZExcellent.com. The last time Dan picked something, it was really good, so I'm excited. Today, Dan is going to tell me what we are watching, because in the 30 seconds since he last said the title, I have already <laughs> forgotten it. Uh, so today we will be watching the Lumilin Classic, Summer of the Chew Toy Soul. A lot of people might remember Lumilin Films from the last movie we watched from them, Only Interstellar, Pinball Lives Forever. I, I feel like people need to know... The mo word movie is doing a lot of work in that sentence. Hey, I remember everything in that movie. This indie cinema experience <laughs> uh is a lot easier to follow uh and is in fact a donkey kong 64 review so, oh, no. oh good i'm so excited good okay i hope you all look forward to it this will get you in the mood to play donkey kong 64 right <laughs> no <laughs> what what what's our expectations everybody but dan <laughs> that's <easy>. kd <laughs> um <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know how to feel about this because last one was good because apparently you were in it. It was just you narrating the whole film. <laughs> uh, but this one, um, you know, anything could happen. I just hope that uh, I can feel all of my senses by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, have you seen this? Has, has he inflicted this on you already? I, I don't think I've seen the full version. I think I've seen something very similar to this. Um, <laughs> I don't it's like a Lovecraftian know nightmare. <laughs> what to expect from yeah. the full? It's great. I think or this like might. I think this might be the full thing of that thing Dan had once. The VH tape that just said Chapter Black. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> no. I can't have any expectations because the last one was truly beyond comprehension. <laughs> he was that gigabrain. Don't worry. This is a lot more everyone's speed. Excited for your summary. If we, if there's anything in this that we can point at and say that's actually about Donkey Kong sixty four, I'll consider <laughs> that a win. <laughs> I'm expecting a banana. Just, just in the foreground, it's like it's like The Godfather, where whenever you see oranges, you know somebody's going to die. <laughs> oh no! Oh man, how exciting. <sighs> We're going to go watch this movie now, and if you would like to watch it with us, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash gbpodcasts. For as little as $5 a month, you get Cursed Content Club commentary tracks on movies such as this, Cursed Content by Committee, that's our user voting Cursed Content show, extended armchair dev pitches, early access to Mondo Cool, our Dragon Ball review podcast, and other benefits. That's patreon.com slash GB podcasts. Supporting us helps us support keeping people indoors. Fight the good fight for content. This makes That's me true. want to go outside. <laughs> and remember, the Gigaboots Podcasting Network, the only podcasting network practicing social distancing and sounding good doing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, let's go. Let's watch the movie. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Casey, you sounded like you're dying. <laughs> it's terminal. And we're back. There is no summary. Die. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, what do you think of Die? What uh, do you think of Summer of the Chew Toy Soul? I thought Summer of the Chew Toy Soul was a, a, a great exploration into a man's youth as he reflects on it in an apartment by himself. Uh, it's, uh, it's very fantastic when Kid Him pulls out charts explaining that his ex-wife only wants to have anything to do with men who have money, uh, and all these other bitter truths. It's, uh, 
Fantastic. And uh, hey, Bob. What's up, Dan? Uh, yes, this was a, a short at one point, as you can see, I've posted in the uh, in the Curse Contact Club thing the original five minute short. Oh my god! That it was expanded from. Uh, I think there's and, a and lot then he's of like I have an hour more of material to this. <laughs> I I think uh, some of the Chew Toy Soul has some very fantastic lines in it. I think there are some great moments. It is longer than I would like, though. Uh, so in that way, I don't like it as much as only Interstellar Pinball Lives Forever. It's a little bit better than his movie Gurf. Uh, I think it's not as good as uh, There Once Was a Bitter Bastard. And quite frankly, I can deal with the genital mutilation in order to get past that and God hates you now. So I think of these movies, this may be one of my least favorite. But oh man, is it pulling punches compared to the full cut of the sort of digestive calmness. <gasps> Dan, how many of these fucking things are there? Uh, there was only one I didn't list just now, so do the math. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> He's I, I, a lot. I won't be doing the math, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone do the math. Leave it in the comment section for feel. Thank you. Uh, KZ, what did you think of this? I didn't even give it a number. <laughs> uh, this was worse than Interstellar Pinball Lives Forever, negative five. I didn't give it a number. <laughs> Wow, Dan, what's your number? Because uh, I kind of ran over you because uh, <laughs> this paralyzed my brain. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give this a negative three. Um, it it could be worse. Uh, it definitely could be better. It's no it's no only Interstellar pinball lives forever. I'd watch a channel awesome movie before watching this again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow! But yeah, but you wouldn't watch to boldly flee again. Yeah, I would. <laughs> It's three wow, times you're, as you're long. Insane. Four times. Four times as long. This feels twice as long as to boldly flee for me. <laughs> that you might have a brain I, disease. <laughs> my body Bob, started to become paralyzed. During to boldly flee, KZ time traveled with the power of liquor. <laughs> yes, that's yes. true. Uh, naturally, you finally got the bit. <laughs> <laughs> um. I would say this is not as bad as any of those Channel Awesome movies. It isn't good. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's still better than The Last Jedi, though. <laughs> so I guess that makes it a negative two. I think that's where it has to land. I, there are some parts, some parts in here that were actually funny. Uh, it was mostly terrible. But there were once yeah. in a while, oh, huh, good, good. And then just back to, oh no, there's nothing happening. This whole thing should be like a quarter of the length. I, I agree with that. It should be a lean, mean 25 minutes at most. Yeah. <laughs> when I looked at the time and there were 33 minutes left, I got nauseous. <laughs> I started off really hating this, but I, I guess as my brain started to numb and the higher brain function started to turn off, I started to get a little bit into it because it's like, yeah... Like I was my my family was fucking poor. I didn't have shit to do in the summer. The walls looked bad. No, not no, not my house. Uh but I could I could start to relate like yes, this this is how that feels. This is a very good simulation of when you were 9 and it was summer and it was near the end of the summer and you had done everything in the fucking world. So now you were just laying on the floor staring at the ceiling. Going, what do I I don't have anything to do. Yeah. Because when when you're not when you're nine, summer is forever. Yes, because as you age, your perception of time actually contracts. So summer when you're like nine is so much longer than a year when you're an adult. But that doesn't change the fact this is really bad, so I'm giving it a <laughs> negative two. <laughs> I'm very excited for these segments. Well, with the reviews out of the way, we have to start with uh, uh, fuck. our favorite character. Mm, yeah. And I'll, I'll permit Dan to start us off on that. Oh, well, I'll be generous. My favorite character is Delicious Birdquist. <laughs> God. I think the scene with Delicious Birdquist is fucking hilarious. Um... And the way they announce Delicious Birdquist's name is also hilarious. It's one of the outstanding names in this. Uh, I'm going to give it to Delicious Birdquist to save you all from having to fight me for a more major character. But I really do like Delicious Birdquist. Bob. Uh, Black Kitty. 
Fuck, Black Kitty that was strong. Mine. <laughs> it, it, it brings joy. They play with it a few times. And uh, yeah, it's cute. <laughs> Yeah, this is a cute cat. <laughs> they play with it. It is never once in the frame with the puppet because that cat wants nothing to do with the puppet. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the puppet scares the heck out of the cat. <laughs> KZ. <sighs> um, the Nintendo 64 expansion pack because it escaped. <sighs> that we, that we character wasn't in this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's he the reason. He was referenced, though. He was yep. referenced. Mm hmm. A lot. A lot, in fact. <laughs> That Ram expansion pack was told like in Legends. It's like the guy from Spy Kids 3D game over. <laughs> My favorite character is Dobo's white supremacist father who becomes a Nazi in response <laughs> to his wife leaving him, which I thought was just a joke I was making throughout the movie to stay alive, but then near the end, Dobo, I guess it's his dad's lighter. It has an iron eagle on it that is holding the swastika. Mm-hmm. And then I yelled, no, why is my bit real? <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna go with that. Well, let's move right along and get into our favorite scene. I feel like it'd benefit KZ to go first in this round. So, so what little things he has aren't taken from him. <laughs> All right. Favorite scene. Um, <laughs> the scene in which Dobo does coke. This is a pretty good scene. I'm a big fan where it's like, ah, oh, here's a straw. It just fucking here's a straw. <laughs> here's the straw Muppets. Would have been better if they had used a rolled up dollar bill, but I guess that would have been a little bit. <laughs> a little hard. A little bit harder for the puppet to manage. Yep. My favorite scene. I just had it. Where'd it go? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Crack no. Crack me it's sand. Oh. My favorite scene is uh, when Dobo's white supremacist father closed the door, revealing it did indeed close improperly, as I had pointed out the moment we saw the doors, the doors latch and knob ten minutes earlier. God. Damn. It's really complicated, uh, but I think the height of this movie is probably the ending sequence. Choosing one specific part is really crucial in this. I think the very ending, where, uh, I don't know how much we want to spoil this, you know, people might listen to the <laughs> review before the commentary, the last thing I'd want to do is rob them of the only morsel in the entire film. <laughs> That's true. That was an incredible payoff, almost enough to give it a negative four in my book, which is not enough. <laughs> It's uh, it's it's honestly the ending sequence is the last fifteen minutes of this movie are the only reason I hold it in a positive regard, uh, generally speaking. Um, because I think it's a really strong last fifteen minutes. I think it's a really weak middle forty minutes. <laughs> forty five. You could have cut. You could have cut some of it out. <laughs> Just a bit. We could have watched the short. <laughs> Please look forward to the Giga Dan cut. <laughs> Tristan would come over here and kick my ass. Um, or try to assemble a futon and cry. <laughs> <laughs> that part is great. It is. it is. Do you link this dude our episodes on his movies? What would make you say that? Why would I do such a thing? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, then I can do this. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't listen to KZ. I appreciate it, even if I think it's bad. <laughs> so, who? Bob. Okay. Bob is next. Yeah, Bob, what's your favorite scene? Um, One of my favorite scenes is part of that ending, but it's earlier in. I want to be more specific where uh, <laughs> Dobo rolls up in this open suitcase yeah. and says, Beep, beep, it's suicide day. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. That is really good. That that so, ending that ending is fair. That ending almost makes it worth watching. It's so <laughs> fucking good. Um, but or if you have a brain disease like me, it makes it makes you want to show it to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> if, but if it can't be in there, if that overlap was staying too much, I do have a backup. I, I feel like there's a little bit of overlap there. Maybe you should. Okay. Uh, the scene where he interrogates time itself, and it's just him yelling at a clock. <laughs> Like one of those plate clocks? Yeah. 
That is really good. Because, of course, it says he's he's hocked up on coke again. Right. It was the it's second day, day of him being hocked up on coke, so he starts yelling at a clock. This is really good. Well, that was enough for positivity. Wait a second. It's time for the opposite. Oh, okay. Did Feel give a best scene? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. When he when he had, when he had difficulty cl- closing the door, proving I was right. <laughs> oh, that that explains why I forgot it. <laughs> Sorry. Now it's time for our least favorite character, and in this segment, Bob gets to double up and go first. Um. Oh my god. Uh, the porcelain cat that tells him to kill himself. What? Why was that your least favorite character? I was, like the part where it made extremely loud. No! It, was, it popped up with pleas for him to kill himself. It was really that character's a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> we can't support porcelain cat. But he has to kill himself to go to pet heaven. Yeah, he said he would see them in heaven, and he forgot about them. At least porcelain cat seems to feel that way. <laughs> I, f- I feel bad for anyone who's just listening to the review. <laughs> <laughs> they are really left in the dark on this whole movie, yeah. We just sound like we all did Datura and just started screaming random nonsense. <laughs> this, the, people are going to be like, is this the joke episode they talked about where there's no movie? They just fucking made it up? <laughs> <laughs> it feels it, like that. No, that, epi- like that. That, that will be more cogent. <laughs> Dan, who's your pick on the worst character? Um, hmm. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, Bath Doggy. Bath Doggy's my least favorite character because it's in the worst part of the film. Uh, the billiards thing. You know, it just starts playing that video involving, uh, billiards on the Panasonic TV. Oh, I didn't know who the fuck you were talking about. Yeah, no, it it, (laughs) it doesn't help that I'm calling them by their names. (laughs) No. Um, yes <laughs> you're specifically trying to cause more harm but yeah bath doggies uh, i i feel like that is blatantly cut from another film and played in this one and uh since i know for a is fact it i know for a fact the animated thing earlier in the film is so because it says it in the credits i'm pretty sure but uh yeah no i'm sure Ugh. this is just some other yeah. short that uh tristan made i i was going to elect the that animated short but i, I I just didn't want to think about it. Ratty Mouse is very powerful in the worst ways. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. That's the part of a Tristan no- Newcomb film where you just, you hurt. <laughs> where like, you're like, please do a thing. And then it seems like it's going to do a thing and then it doesn't. It's like, here's something else. It has no relevance, but here it is. <laughs> My least favorite scene. Are we doing character? Yeah. Why are we doing character? Damn, I got this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, we started I talk- don't blame you. I don't blame we started, you. We started talking about Ratty Mouse's animation. I got mixed up. My least favorite character is the texturing in the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> the texturing in the apartment definitely couldn't beat Jiren. <laughs> it's real bad. It's real <laughs> bad. They did, they did like popcorn texturing on the ceiling and orange peel on the walls. But they did bad orange peel on the walls. Oh, it looks no. real bad. <laughs> a lot of this, it, watch our commentary track, uh, patreon.com slash GB podcast. Wow. If you want to see me critique a bad apartment in real time. <laughs> Between this and Malibu's most wanted. KZ, who's your least favorite character? Uh, I, I understand thinking of two characters in this entire movie is difficult. Bob and I left all these crumbs on the ground, though. Uh, Satan. Satan was bad great. influence. I don't know what you're talking about. He He's a bad him. influence. <laughs> Satan had more of a purpose in this movie than most. I, I don't know. I think the writing wasn't on point there. He came in way too late. <laughs> <laughs> if we had more time with Satan, they could have built him out better as a character. I mean, honestly, if we had more time with Satan, it would just be literally better. <laughs> He, he, yeah, he kind of just came in, wasn't really explained as much as I would have wanted. He's uh, the Palpatine of this movie. <laughs> Satan Satan has dubstep lightning. <laughs> <laughs> that would have gotten it to a negative four. Now it's time for our least favorite scene. I'll start and look upon the hardest thing I have to do, remembering another scene in this movie. 
It's coming. Mm -hmm. Taking a second, but it's coming. I got. I got. You. You were excited to do it earlier, so I thought you would have had one. I haven't up. I haven't upgraded to the PS5's new solid state drive yet. I'm loading like an Xbox One original, so it's taking me a second. Trying to load your gimmick right now. The entire bath dog scene. That entire scene where you're watching the Panasonic TV. It is really bad. Yeah. Oh, with like the billiards and the NBC logo. The billiard, yes. It's all, it's, it, it takes away from the focus of the movie. Totally drags it down, in my opinion. I have good news, KZ. You get to go second. Uh, okay. Uh, ratty mouse scene. That is, um, bar none, the worst thing I've ever watched on Curse Content. I can't disagree. That was going to be my nomination for worst scene. I was, I was so genuine. <laughs> I was like, I need to leave. I wanted to leave the room <laughs> because it was so fucking. I would watch anything else. I watched to boldly flee in Spanish. <laughs> oh, ooh, 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 ooh. and not like a dub of Spanish. Them trying to speak Spanish. <laughs> that's that's really bad. Oh. So I guess that makes it Bob's turn. Sure. Uh, the the scene where uh, Dobo pees in a bottle and then puts crayons in the bottle. Uh, yeah. See, I kind of I kind of like that scene because I'm like, yeah, that's kind of stupid thing a bored eight year old gut does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, he he peeing comes up frequently in this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. He like also pees into the wine coolers. Yeah, because they taste like piss. He can't tell the difference. Uh huh. Yeah, the well, he he's not the drinking the piss. His dad is. There's a distinction. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what was with the oh no, Bob? What's wrong? Nothing. Everything's fine. Good, Dan. That means you get to tell us your least favorite scene. <sighs> it's really complicated. Um, I think everyone's done a great job of picking up bad scenes. I feel like. You know there there are obviously many scenes in this where he's just doing nothing and <laughs> yes. and rambling um some of them some of them go somewhere some of them don't <sighs> i'm going to go ahead and say when he went into uh daddy's dark realm or dark world <coughs> and he didn't actually do anything he just immediately thought of mommy's dark world that was really disappointing because there was a lot of build up to him going into daddy's dark world and then nothing. Uh, either that or when it starts doing the Muppet show. Subverted your expectations. The Muppet show thing was some bullshit too. Yeah. Didn't he go into the, didn't, wasn't, wasn't it just like, oh, daddy's dark world has empty cans of soup and, and beer and Shiner rocks. Yes. There's Shiner Bach. I don't yeah. know if there was supposed to be more there. I didn't really feel like there was supposed to be more in the daddy dark realm. Let me put this the, the best way I can. When you're filming an entire film in one apartment, don't waste a whole room. <laughs> I feel like they wasted many rooms. God, <laughs> you're so right. It's, there must have been at least one other bathroom. Uh, uh, isolation 119 man wouldn't have done that. It's true. Isolation true. 119 man he used, used the entire animal. <laughs> He, he he really did. He was a fucking Native American with that shit. <laughs> he had a spiritual connection to every room he got to film in. He made a website. Every uh, shout out to Tristan Newcomb who forgot to log out of YouTube while filming the scenes with uh, Dobo on YouTube so you can see uh, his Smuppets username up in the top right during those scenes. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm it's sure called an Easter egg. Yeah, I'm sure that was an Easter egg. Yes, you can call it an Easter egg. Some people call this a movie. <laughs> I like doing that. We're trapped in a recording with one of them right now. <laughs> well, that's it for our segments. Does anybody have any final thoughts on Summer of the Chew Toy Soul? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect you to. Uh, Bob, do you have any? Uh... I, I kind of, I can appreciate what Tristan does, but I would rather not watch his movies. <laughs> okay, maybe I could maybe I could get to uh, Bob's take. I could maybe get to that level. <laughs> Dan, go ahead and gush. Summer of the Chew Toy Soul. Its uh, biggest positive is that it doesn't have genital mutilation. Uh, 
and that's pretty cool. <laughs> I uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I think it having some sort of through line is helpful. Um, but I think the through lines of there once was a bitter bastard and God hates you now are a little bit clearer. I honestly think uh, there once was a bitter bastard is a better film. So, you know, look forward to that. Oh, no. We'll have to watch more of his films. <laughs> In the time that we have been recording this, I have thrown this movie at several other people. Like, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> because... As as nothing as the first forty minutes are. Yeah. First fifty minutes. First fifty. Yep. The ending really is almost a payoff. The ending is really good. The ending is so good. It's because it tricks you into thinking this nothing about this could ever be coherent. So it shocks you that it somehow becomes coherent. And and if if you've ever if you remember being a child and being like when is summer over? This is so long. I don't have them. We're poor. I get two new games a year, and the last one was five months ago. Help. Yeah. Help. It's very realistic in that way. <laughs> With that in the ending, it's almost recommendable out of something other than malice. <laughs> And you can st you can still recommend it with only a little bit of malice, an acceptable amount of malice. <laughs> acceptable amount. It is not as good as Isolation One One Nine, which I can wholeheartedly recommend without malice. But still, anybody have anything else to say? It's not fair to compare things to Isolation One One Nine. That is a juggernaut of a film. I probably rate Isolation One One Nine. Huh? I would rate that higher now in hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> That, that movie's great. I mean, you did say you'd rather watch Twilight that again. Yeah, there's some good parts in that, though. Most of that movie is good. Yeah. Yep. It's okay. It, I feel like Tristan's gonna really redeem himself in There Was Once a Bitter Bastard. I feel like I feel like that's gonna be his redemption story. Maybe you'll negotiate the streaming rights for the complete version of that one movie. Uh, no, I'm not as interested in that. It'll be a whole new that. ball game. I'm not as interested in that because if you thought this was uh, painful, holy fucking shit. Yeah, guys, uh, yeah, that, that thing. That no. thing will make KZ go to negative seven. <laughs> uh, but let me tell you the biggest mystery because I know this is hard for your brains to work with. You've now seen two Luminland films, right, guys? There are zero puppets in There Was Once a Bitter Bastard. Can you even imagine what that film is? Now okay. I'm excited. <laughs> that gets me excited because my favorite scene of any of these films, uh, with hindsight, is the part where they're playing Devil May Cry 4, but the battery isn't in, but then they leave to go throw pizza boxes into the garbage, but he misses and has to run back and go pick them up again, throw them back in the trash. I am not lying to you when I say this film is nothing but that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Dan? Oh. Dan, that might be a five. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Well, thank you for listening to yet another Cursed Content Club. There is no ending. Die. <laughs> <laughs> This month's Gigaboots videos have erupted into reality thanks to the money magic of our executive producers. Esme, Nicholas Cameron, E. Lee Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Star Falcon, Danny Richardson, Red Blaze 27, Zanki Kongetsu, and Adam Admar. Thank you very much to our executive producers. And also these guys. If you want to become powerful like our executive producers, you can head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today. Gigaboots.